All right, am I recording? Okay. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wing and I just wing it. I know it's been a while, I've been busy lately, but I'm back now. So nice to see all of you lovely faces. And today's video, I'll be talking about the new camera that Sony released. After patiently waiting for the announcement for the Sony A7C Mark II since the release of the Sony ZV-E1, Sony finally announced the Sony A7C Mark II and the A7CR. And damn, they look so fantastic, especially the retro look of the A7C line. Now, I've been loving my Sony A7C camera ever since I got it. And that's why when the Sony A7C Mark II is rumored to come out, I got so excited and hold off in getting the Sony ZV-E1. But it turns out that I won't be getting the Sony A7C Mark II after all. And we'll get to that in a bit. But man, in the ever-evolving world of photography and videography, choosing the right camera can be a daunting task. Especially nowadays that camera companies keep releasing new camera models with new features year after year like smartphones. But for now, I will be discussing or focusing on a new A7C2 and we'll take the A7CR out of the equation because not only that camera is too expensive for me, so there's no sense of talking about it. And also that A7CR is mainly for photography and I am leaning more towards the videography side of the mirrorless cameras. And for that, I will be tossing the ZV-E1 in this video for it has the same price as the Sony A7C Mark II. And as an enthusiast who has explored the capabilities of both cameras by watching so many videos and reviews from big time YouTubers and according to all of the information I have gathered, my thoughts and view about the Sony A7C II actually falls short of my expectation. While the ZV-E1 emerges as more appealing choice and these are my thoughts as why. But let's talk about their similarities first. Both ZV-E1 and the A7C II are full frame mirrorless cameras. Both are compact size bodies. Both takes NPFZ batteries, which is a really good battery for a longer shoots. Both cameras have one SD card slot. Both cameras takes micro HDMI for video output. Also, they both have microphone and headphone jacks and also have a 3 inches, 1.3 million dot screen display with a USB-C ports for live streaming videos and power delivery. Both cameras have features to record with gyro data for post stabilization. Uh, they both have auto framing features, lens breathing compensation for Sony lenses and user lots download. And like I said, both cameras has the same price tag of $2,199 US dollars. Now let's move into the differences, the advantage and disadvantage of these two cameras. Now the A7C2 has a 33 megapixel while the ZV-E1 has only 12 megapixel. Now when it comes to photography, the A7C2 has the upper hand for more megapixels can capture more details in your shot. But when it comes to video, the smaller size megapixel on the ZV-E1 will outshine the A7C2 in low light capabilities. Speaking of low light capability, the Sony ZV-E1 has a higher range of ISO compared to the A7C2. Now the A7C2 has a mechanical shutter while the ZV-E1 has only an electronic shutter. But there will be some advantage and disadvantage having one of the two. Having a mechanical shutter of the A7C2 can be good for taking photos but not good in rolling shutter. While the ZV-E1 that has the electronic shutter might not be good for taking photos especially when introduced with LED lights which can produce a lot of banding on your image. But having an electronic shutter can also be good when it comes to rolling shutter and can minimize that nasty jello effect in your video. Another difference between these two camera is the EVF. The Sony A7C2 has that electronic viewfinder which can be good and useful for photography but the ZV-E1 lacks that electronic viewfinder 
But as for me, I haven't really used the viewfinder on my A7C. So having a no viewfinder does not bother me at all. Now when it comes to vlogging, the Sony ZV-E1 takes the lead for it has an onboard 3 capsule dynamic mic array with an auto detect. So it will capture the sound of your voice to whichever side of the camera you're talking at. It could be at the front or at the back. It will have that nice quality audio. While the Sony A7C2 only has one onboard standard microphone which does not sound so great. Although both cameras do have an electronic Hachu mount interface which you can mount a better microphone for high quality audio recording. And also the Sony ZV-E1 has a slightly smaller body weighing at 483 grams while the Sony A7C2 weighs at 513 grams. Now this might not sound a lot but still the Sony ZV-E1 excels in portability making it an ideal companion for those on the move. Now in terms of video capture, this is where it gets complicated. Both cameras can capture 4K 24 or 4K 30 FPS, but the difference is this. The Sony A7C 2 in 4K 30 FPS captures a downsampled 7K footage while the Sony ZV-E1 captures at a full 4K resolution, which can be an advantage for the Sony A7C 2 when you pixel peep, but from here, it's gonna get interesting. Why? Here's why. When it comes to 4K 60 frames per second, the Sony A7C2 will have a 1.5 crop, which is an APS-C mode, while the Sony ZV-E1 remains at the true 4K resolution without the crop. And it gets more interesting from here. When it comes to 4K 120 FPS, this is where the Sony ZV-E1 blows the A7C2 out of the water because the Sony A7C2 does not have the 4K 120 resolution except for 1080p at 120fps. I know, bummer. While the Sony ZV-E1 not only have the 4K 120fps, but can also go up to 240fps in 1080p, which makes the ZV-E1 better in slow motion. Now another advantage of the ZV-E1 from the A7C2 is the dynamic active stabilization, which makes the ZV-E1 comes out very smooth like in a gimbal while in a handheld use. And this can be great for travel because I don't have to bring any gimbal with me. And this feature is important for me because I mostly take my camera with me and not sitting in the tripod most of the time. I have my Sony ZV-E10 for that. Now I am a run and gun filmmaker and that involves a lot of movement like running and panning and which makes the ZV-E1 more convenient for me to film because of that dynamic um, active stabilization. So what are my thoughts of these cameras? Well, the Sony a7C2, though a highly anticipated and undoubtedly capable camera, has left me somewhat disappointed, mainly for the lack of groundbreaking features. It offers refinement, but it's not a game-changing innovation that set it apart from other Sony cameras or its predecessor. And for its price tag of 2000 199 US dollars that falls way behind from the Sony ZV-E1. It's not justifiable to buy this camera. Maybe if this camera is priced under $2,000, then that might be a reasonable price. On the other hand, the ZV-E1 is a superior choice with its jam-packed features, particularly for vlogging and video creation. I feel like the Sony A7C2 should have a closer price tag of the Sony A6700. But that's me. So what do you guys think? Am I making any sense? Do you agree with me? Write your comments down below. I'd love to know. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Please give this a thumbs up if you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. It'll help me push more videos like this. And don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified. And hope to see you on the next video. Ciao. Tag your friends, like and subscribe, comment below, if I make this follow, don't let this flop, wait till the end, like for part two, I'm going viral, I'm going viral.